Hey, this is William Floyd, bar none, and you're listening to Matt and Dexter Carter on The Grueling Truth. Garoppolo, deep down the middle, that's a liftoff. Shanahan and Jimmy, Bill in Montana. Speaking for the Empire, salute from Santana. Yeah, hand on, I root down the middle. Beast through the D-line and made him look brittle. Out of nowhere, Sherman in the Kona. Six the other way, huh? Kings of California. Every breath, tribute to the greatest. Dwight Clark in our heart since the catch when he made it. Hey. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us on the 49ers Weekly Show Championship Game Edition on the Growing Truth Sports Network, brought to you by Replenishing Care Technologies, the future in sports medicine. Check it out at thegruelingtruth.com. It is the championship game preview. I am Matt Andrew Scavage. I'd like to welcome in former 49ers running back, Super Bowl 29 champion, Dexter Carter. Hey, Matt. It's always good to be with you, as I say. But man, who would have thought that going into our fifth year, the 49ers, after six years, are finally back into the playoffs after a full win season last year to the record they have this year going to the NFC Championship game. Man, that is remarkable, and it is truly a plan that put, was put into effect and, and created like a masterpiece by the people who have directed this team to where they are today in Cal Shanahan and Lynch. Man, what a great job they've done. Oh, you aren't kidding. What a turnaround. They come in in 2017 to pretty much a disaster. I mean, we, by that time, we were on year three of the show, and we're talking, you know, the 2015 and 2016 seasons, and there just was no real good good direction. All it was was just, you know, hoping maybe they can squeak into the playoffs, maybe get something together with the draft. But in a year's time, they turned – this roster around, and then they had the setback last year. But here we are in 2019, 13 and three NFC Championship game appearance, one win away, and they will be in the Super Bowl. Amazing. Absolutely. Oh, it is truly amazing. And not only, you know, for the 49ers themselves, it's incredible what they've done, but the NFL is that they, you know, I remember once upon a time when people were talking about um, the uh, NFL was going down whether it was, you know, the medical issues it was having or whether it was the political issues, the NFL is going down, the viewership yep. is going down. But you know what? I think it is a unanimous, u- unanimously when you look at the markets, just of the 49er Vikings game itself, man, you're looking at, thir- uh, I mean, there's 39 million viewers across the country. That was yeah. watching this. I mean, 39 million in Minneapolis, 33 million in San Francisco. And then you got the high 20s in Milwaukee. And I mean, it is awesome. The NFL, I think, are, they're doing a great job. And the NFL is not going anywhere. They're at their best right now. And I mean, and it's evolving, you know, from the athletic ability of the players to teams reinventing themselves. And any team can turn themselves around. It could be one year, it could be five years. But at some point, if you got the right people in place that understand evaluation of talent, talent development, and have a plan, like a lot of these young coaches, the Cal Shanahan's, the coach of Green Bay, you know, I mean, when you have a plan in place with a great system and have the right players, you can turn an organization around. And uh, the right people in the 49ers have done that. Man, they have a reason to be excited. But you know what? They've got two games to go and continue to do what they do. And if they do, I think they have a chance to win it all. Yeah, you really said it. Uh, You know, you look at last year, the Green Bay Packers, uh, I believe they were winners of six games. And the uh, 49ers were winners of four. And here they are in the championship game, turning things around with a young coach, new system, and uh, just a couple of good moves. And all of a sudden, the team can turn it around. And that is the beauty of the NFL. You don't have to stay in the gutter for long. If you make some good moves, you can turn your uh, your whole thing. The whole team can be turned around quickly. Absolutely. And that's what gives teams like... 
Cleveland hope and changing coaches again, trying to get that right guy. Well, let's not get ahead. Let's not get crazy. Cleveland hope. Hey, 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 but you know what? I remember, (laughs) hey, I remember it might have been just a little short time before my NFL experience. But Bernie Kozar had those Cleveland Browns. Yeah, he did. He you know, did. in the NFC in the AFC Championship game. So, can you win? Absolutely. When you have a fan base like those dog, them dogs. Yes. Oh, they can win. So you know what? I don't ever want to see them beat the 49ers in a Super Bowl, but I would like to see them. You know, have a good competitive team for that Cleveland base because you saw what happened when LeBron came and the basketball Cavaliers played well. I mean, those fans deserve, you know, I think every city deserves a good team, whether it's hockey, football, baseball, or whatever. Um, but it just goes, but it goes back to planning and, and being able to execute, you know, well put together plan, man. I like that. That's why being a former player, whether it's college or pro, or whatever, I hate to see a team lose. I like to see a competitive game, you know, but when it comes down to, you know, those Seminoles and 49ers, at the end of the day, I want to see them win. <laughs> but I yes. do like to see a good, good competitive game across the board. That way everybody succeeds. Yeah, right now I'm kind of basing uh, – I, I change my air filter on my furnace every time Cleveland fires their coach. That's once a year. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever I see that, I'm, I'm what they call Black Monday. <laughs> I like it. I like Cleveland it. fires their coach. Like, oh, that's right. i got to change my, oil fil- my, uh, my air filter. <laughs> so we're but, but, I, oh, but I hear you, man. Everybody, should des- everybody does deserve to see a winner. Absolutely, absolutely. Changing their coach just serves a purpose, man. It's a reminder. Yep. Change our change our filters. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, man. But hey, but yeah, yeah. Kyle Shanahan, man, you got to give it to him, man. He was, yes. I mean, he had a great, great plan going into this Minnesota game, and many people were talking about, man, Kirk Cousins going to give up all the secrets of Kyle Shanahan to yeah. work together <laughs> with the work? Redskins. <laughs> yeah, how that work? I tell you, at the end of the day, you know what? Uh, we talked last week about the game was going to be won in the trenches because at the end of the day, both defensive fronts were very good. So our, the offensive lines had to perform and their performance will dictate the guys on the back end, the secondary, you know, and of course on the offensive side, the running game. And in both of those fronts, the 49ers prevailed. Yeah. As far as the Viking game goes, I mean, you nailed it. The, the the game really was one in the trenches. The uh, the Vikings defensive line. There was one play where Mike McGlinchey wasn't set, and uh, Daniel Hunter got past him in sack Garoppolo. Other than that, there just was not much pressure on on, on Garoppolo. And then they had a real hard time stopping the run game. Uh, but on the other side, Kirk Cousins was under serious pressure, especially in the second half. And uh, Dalvin Cook to me was the key of the game. They held him to I believe eighteen yards and nine carries and. He caught six screen passes, which were, you could tell, I mean, it, it was pretty much the, the, the check down, um, pretty much, uh, oh, I'm under pressure and I got to get rid of the ball right now and I'm going to Dalvin Cook. And whenever Dalvin Cook caught the ball six times, he was limited to eight yards. So, I mean, that is tremendous uh, penetration up front and uh, cleaning everything up on the back end by the, by the linebackers. So that's really, to me, what was the difference in the game. Once they took Dalvin Cook away, the Vikings became one-dimensional. They were able to get that turnover, uh, Richard Sherman, in the third quarter, and that's where Kyle Shanahan went to work on that game plan and said, you know what, the, the passing game, uh, the Vikings have the number five defense – uh, the passing game is not going exactly as I want. I'm going to run the ball and I'm going to tire these guys out because they're coming off a short week and 19 runs for five, uh, 19 runs for at least five yards or more. And that is a, that's a crusher over 40, 40 attempts and almost 200 yards rushing. And they just flat out dominated the line of scrimmage in the second half. So I think you nailed it. Uh, that's really where the game was taken over by the 49ers and they got it done. Absolutely. The running game, we talked about how important it would be. And as you said, you already talked about the Davin Cook stats and how impactful that 49er defense was. Um, And of course, Coleman and that 49er offensive line made it happen. 
They yes. made the run it, you know, the running game has been the base all season, although we have been able to pass the ball well. But what's interesting is in this game, the 49ers showed they can run if they have to, if they need to win the game pass and they'll pass. But you know what? Kittles, I believe the very first pass he dropped, I believe. I may be wrong. But at the end yes, of the day, you're right. Six, yeah, he had 16 yards receiving. Mm-hmm. And and this is what I like. Kittles is a key card of this offense. And he was, you know, usually if I see those numbers, a lot of people say, oh, he was neutralized. But what's interesting is Kittles is so good and his run game blocking is so good, he doesn't allow the minimum numbers passing to affect the other areas of his game. And he blocked. That's why the running game was so successful. Kittles did his usual great run blocking. The offensive line did. And you know what? The As they go into the NFC Championship game, they know they've got Kittles in the passing game, those crossing routes, getting downfield on corner routes, you know, the seams. They got Kittle. Kittle can do that. But they did not allow that to say, oh, my God, we can't get the ball to Kittles. Garoppolo said, you know what? Hey, we'll get the ball to Bourne on a few passes, you know, here and there, move the ball down, use our running game, and play smart. And that's what Garoppolo did, man. I tell you, as a 49er fan, former player, or faithful, man, they made me even more proud, even though we know as an offense they've got so much more that one they weren't able to show in this particular game, but they showed enough to uh, get to the NFC Championship game and be optimistic on, you know, what the outcome could be. Now, it's going to be tough because Green Bay is not going to be the same team that came in. Now, they will be from a competitive perspective, but, man, who thought Green Bay would even be here with the quarterback and new coach combination that they've got? But you know what? Who would want an NFC game that didn't have this kind of star power and this kind of excitement? Yeah, that's that, that's exactly right. You know, getting to uh, what you talked about, George Kittle in the ground game. I saw him take Everson Griffin completely out of play repeatedly. And that's a defensive end, a pretty dang good defensive end. And George Kittle blocked him as if he was the le- the right tackle. And that was just impressive. I mean, the guy is so good on blo- on uh the guy is so good with his blocking in the ground game. And that's why, you know, when he was out those two games, you could see that the offense was just not the same. I think it's going to be a lot different against Green Bay. I think Minnesota's actually a better defense. Um, but and while Green Bay is going to be really good, their their strength is in those uh, in those pass rushers, the Smith brothers, as they're called. And uh, the good th- but good news for the 49ers, Joe Staley is in this game. He was not in that game on week 12. That was a, a rookie, Justin School. And Joe Staley is playing at a very high level. You know, against yes. the Vikings, Joe Staley didn't allow a pressure. It, since he's been back, he has allowed four pressures <laughs> the last few games. Uh, that's and, pretty yeah. awesome. And that's great to see because I know when he first came back, I think one of the games yes. um, that we mentioned was against Seattle. And you know what? He kind of got – Walked back a couple of times by Clowney, but then again, he could have played every game and not gotten injured and Clowney gonna, is going to walk most people back. But it is great to see, you know, watching that process, you realize, man, the guy's just coming back. He's an all pro. Just give him time. And you know what? He has. He's gotten better over those last few weeks. And he is the same guy that he was before he left. So that's great, great to, you know, to see because that – Bows well for the 49ers. Um, and, 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 and one thing about uh, moving over uh, to the defense, what excited me is, one, D Ford and Quan Alexander coming back healthy. And, you know, a lot of people, they don't look at the numbers. They don't realize it, but they just look at the excitement of the game. But Minnesota was held to just seven first down. I mean, that they the 49ers narrowly missed the NFL playoff record. I mean, because when you have an offense coming into the game as potent as what Minnesota had and you hold them to seven first downs, man, that is that is freaking awesome. You know, I mean, to see the 49ers able to dictate, you know, the way, you know, what they wanted Minnesota to do and what they didn't want Minnesota to do. I mean, they tweaked their defense early with, you know, Killer Weatherspoon, who – really wasn't playing as well, and they pulled him out the game. I mean, I'm telling you, Kyle Shanahan wastes no time 
doing what he thought was best for that team overall, whether it was pull people, put people in, and adjust his game plan. Man, it was well, well designed on both sides of the ball. Yeah, to kind of wrap up the Viking game, go, getting back to what you're saying, um, you know, Kyle Shanahan went, uh, you know, to a killer Weatherspoon before the game and said, I'm not going to hesitate to make the switch if I have to. And here's the character of the, uh, of, uh, the players on this team. Weatherspoon got beat. He got out of position, had a penalty, didn't have a good first quarter. That was really that, that one pass. That was basically the Vikings offense on the day. Uh, right. it, you know, you could see the frustration on Weatherspoon and they knew they had to take him out and they put Emmanuel Mosley in. And once Mosley came in, uh, that was it for Minnesota. They just did not really have much of a gain the rest of the day. But here's the character of Akilah Weatherspoon. He went to the special teams coach. I mean, this has been uh, all over uh, uh, 49ers Twitter and all, and, and it's gotten around. But in case you have not heard, he went to the special teams coach and said, look, Emmanuel Mosley's in for me and he's going to need all of his energy to play the rest of the game. Give me all of his special teams reps. I will just I want to make sure he's got what he needs in order to play corner the rest of the game. So make sure you let me take care of special teams. That's character. That is that that is a real teammate. That's not someone who's going to sit on the bench and complain about his role. That's someone who's, hey, put me in whatever I can do to help the team. I'm going to get it done. That's the kind of people that the Niners have on this team. Yeah, and that's true. You know, he could have complained about it. But you know what? It's not like Kyle Shanahan wasn't up front honest. And exactly. It's just re- yeah, and it's, it's just reality. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, everybody knows the game plan. They know the rules. They know what will happen. And if this happens, you know, we're going to do this. You know, and at, uh, again, if you want your job or you want a job and you want to be productive and you want the team to be successful, a lot of players won't do that. So I am a, a very commendable, you know, of him to uh, – go and vocally say that because he's right. You know, if this guy, we got to take him off special teams to focus on a certain thing that wasn't intended when the game started, you know what? This, we're we're better as a team if this occurs. So, you know what? I do, I commend him and I'm uh, happy for him and, and he was productive on those special teams. So it wasn't like the 49ers dropped in performance on those special teams. He went out there and performed well and, and the team needed that. Yeah, that's exactly it. So, you know, the last thing I think as we as we kind of shift into uh, previewing the Packer game, um, you know, there's Jimmy Garoppolo did not have his best game. But as we as, as you mentioned, the, the Niners can beat you so many different ways. And so while the the opening I thought the opening drive was really sharp, uh, Garoppolo looked good. The passing game looked good. They were able to get that first, that opening touchdown to Kendrick Bourne. You know, in the rest of the game, I think there were some throws uh, that uh, Garoppolo made that were, you know, probably the ball placement wasn't where he was hoping it would go. There was that interception. I don't think he saw the linebacker. Linebacker read his eyes and picked it off. But you know what? The team doesn't panic. They just, they'll beat you any a number of ways. I think in, in the Green Bay game, I don't think he's going to have the same issue. Uh, I You watched, the, especially that first time they played, the pressure there was there was some early pressure, but you know what? Kittle finds ways to get open. That they're going to find ways to get this passing game going. I think Green Bay is going to really try to sell out to stop the run and try in their minds make Garoppolo beat you, and that's where I think he's going to excel. So I expect Garoppolo to make a lot better throws against the Packers. Um, you know, I think he still is uh, tremendous. We've seen him carry the team at times when the defense hasn't been up to speed, when the run game hasn't done much. Garoppolo has stepped in and carried the team. I see Garoppolo having a little bit bigger role in this championship game to make sure that the Niners win uh, and get to the Super Bowl. Yeah, and every offense, and especially, you know, whether I'm coaching Pop Warner, high school, college, or, or whatever, I want to be able to be as close to 50 50 50 as I can. If it's 60 40, some games run versus pass and vice versa, pass versus run. Other weeks, hey, that's great. We're going to do what we are able to do based on what the defense is doing. Sometimes we'll oppose our will, but the 49ers finished with 47 rushes, rushing attempts and 21 pass attempts. Now, there are times it's vice versa. The 49ers does what they have to do to make sure that they're successful as an offense. The receivers understand it. 
Kittles understand it, Garoppolo understand it, and those backs understand it, you know, because they came into the game, the 49ers, said that they wanted to run the ball 30 times. And they were able to do that because they opposed their will. Um, but if they go into this championship game saying that, you know what, let's be as close to 50 50 as possible, understanding though, if they give us the pass more than the run, we're going to take it. But when it's time to run, they're going to be productive as they need to be to win the ball game. So that's the one thing that an offense aspires to be in the 49ers and their players. They got the right players to believe and understand and trust in what Cal Shanahan is going to do throughout the game, regardless of what the game plan is. And they've been successful in doing that. That's right. That's the thing. I think that they're always going to try to plan for that 50-50, but then as the as the game goes on, they they determine pretty well as to what they need to do to win. So, you know, what do you see, you know, as the as the Packers come into town, we know Kyle Shanahan has told everybody don't be stupid. This is not going to be the same kind of game as it was the first time. Don't expect a blowout. The Packers are going to be much different this time around. What do you see as the key uh or the key or keys to to win this game? Well, the one thing you always got to look at, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is, has proven, even with the new coach, that the media tried to make it an issue between the young head coach and Aaron Rodgers. Are they going to get on the same page on audibles? Are they going to, you know, the, 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 the playbook? But you know what? Aaron Rodgers has conceded in certain ways, certain things, and the young coach has put his pride aside and conceded, you know, and they've gotten on the same page. So I think it's going to be the same team just based on the competitive competitiveness of the game because it was a good game. And coming into this game, it's going to be hella competitive. Yes, I mean, it's going to be a sellout, probably more fans in Levi Stadium than they've ever had, which I expected. Um, the excitement obviously is going to be there because it's a conference championship game. But this is going to be a really hard-fought game. I, I think it's going to be closer than the Minnesota game. I think it's going to come down to the wire, in my opinion, because Green Bay has, a, in my opinion, an equal running game to the 49ers. We just got three running backs. They've got one, but he carries the load. Um, the passing game. You know, 17 on Green Bay is no slouch. He is an all pro right. player. <laughs> and they're going to, they're going to, I want to say force the ball to him, but it's not going to be a force as if they can't, you know, you shouldn't be throwing to him. No, they're going to make sure he gets his touches and he's going to produce. We're going to have our receivers, our, our Kettle, all the guys, Emmanuel, all those guys, Devo, they're going to get open and the ball's going to get thrown to him. The offensive lines are going to protect. I think the pressure is going to get to the quarterbacks, but that quarterback that steps up in the pocket, get out of the pocket better, I think they're going to have the most success. Now, I am worried and concerned that our defensive ends got to, again, play their role because I'd rather have Aaron Rodgers step up in the pocket and attempt to run down the field than to let him get out of that pocket because he throws the ball extremely well, about as well as anybody other than Mahomes, getting out of the pocket on the edges and throwing back cross field, downfield, or to the sideline. He does a tremendous job of that. So that part we're going to have to contain because we're going to get the pressure on the defensive front, but we got to play our lanes because if we let him get out and he extend the play for three seconds to the exterior, left or right, allowing those receivers to get open, then we can be in a little bit of trouble there. But that's going to be the key to this game because both teams are going to be able to run the ball well. I think defense is going to play well, but you've got to play those lanes because if quarterbacks get out of the pocket, Aaron Rodgers throws the ball better than Garoppolo in that scenario. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers outside the pocket has always been dangerous uh, I think the Niners uh, have done a good job at uh, preventing that kind of stuff. And if you watch Green Bay during the year, where, where now they've played really well when they've been able to control the clock with the ground game, like you mentioned. Uh, Devontae Adams is definitely uh, their best weapon. Uh, once you get outside of that, if you can limit Devontae Adams, like the Niners were able to do in, the, in their previous matchups, uh, just like 43 yards, not much after the catch. 
Right. That's that's where Green Bay has been stonewalled this year. They have not been able to get that uh, that second weapon. We've seen a little bit out of Lazard. Uh, not, he's a nice young receiver, but they haven't gotten anything out of Geronimo Allison or Marcus Valdez Scantling, uh, like kind of like they thought they were going to get. And Jimmy Graham hasn't really been reliable either. The night it's going to be really important for the Niners to um, make sure that Devonte Adams does not take over. I think uh, you know they, historically. Uh, Devontae Adams has never made a significant play against Richard Sherman. So I don't expect them to uh, <laughs> go throwing at Richard Sherman. They're going to try to get Adams in the slot. They're going to try to get him uh, on Emmanuel Mosley, and it will be up to the team to make sure that Adams doesn't take over. But I think the other key really is going to be Aaron Jones. Last time they limited him to 2.9 yards a carry, didn't allow a lot of big plays. That's really the key. If they if they can not make sure that Aaron Jones doesn't take over and then let that front four with D Ford back this time, he was not there in that first Packer game. If if that front four can be as disruptive as they were against Minnesota, now Green Bay's line is really good. I give them a lot of credit. But if they can, you know, especially like you said, when Aaron Rodgers tries to step up, that's where Buckner needs to be to to, to take him right down and not let him outside of that pocket. If that if that front four can uh, can get after Aaron Rodgers, I really believe they're going to limit that Packer offense because they have struggled this year against a lot of teams, including even Washington and Chicago, uh, some teams that weren't really didn't have good seasons and they struggled a lot. But, you know, if the Niners don't get pressure. Aaron Rodgers is still Aaron Rodgers like you were talking about. So, um, you know, on that side of the ball, that's really where it's going to be. They got to stop Aaron Jones. They got to try to take away Devontae Adams as much as possible. They're not going to be able to shut him down completely, but limit him and really get after Aaron Rodgers. They do those things, and then the offense doesn't turn the ball over. If Garoppolo can <laughs> make sure he doesn't throw one to a linebacker, uh, I really see the Niners uh, winning because their pass protection is going to be better this time around against the Smith brothers. And, and I really see George Kittle carving up those linebackers. They just don't have anybody that can cover him. Yeah, I agree with you. I think coming into this game, I think, one, these offenses have got to take advantage. When they're in the red zone, they've got to score touchdowns, no field goals, because I believe this game's going to end up being a uh, – uh, it's going to be a defensive battle, but I still think, again, Cash is going to go th- score 30 points. I think Green Bay is going to score 30 points. So I think 49ers 37-34. But, again, when you get in the red zone, they're going to have to, one, protect the football, throw throw touchdowns, run touchdowns, and minimize the field goals that they get because these teams with their offensive capability, um, they're going to move the ball. So the team that score, gets the most field goals is probably going to lose. You know, they're going to have to get the ball in the end zone. So protect the ball, don't turn it over, score touchdowns in the red zone, and – the last key thing, um, and I noticed it in Kansas City game last week, there were some mishaps on special teams, turned the ball over, but they have such offensive firepower that they were able to come back after having been in a huge deficit and win big. These two teams don't have that capability. You can't not be successful on special teams, have turnovers, and give the other team a chance to have the ball in the red zone and score touchdowns, or it could get out of hand. But I think as long as you have quality special teams play, you protect the ball, and you score touchdowns again in the red zone, minimize your field goals when you got a chance to score, you know, six, then you know what? I think it's going to be a, man, one of the best games in this playoff uh, season. But I think the 49ers, again, 37-34, it'll be a tough game be a good game, but it's going to be something for the fans to see. Yeah, I think we're basically seeing this game largely the same way. Um, I, I, I'm i going to go with you and say who who scores the most field goals is going to lose. I've got the Niners winning 31-20. to 20. I think the first half is going to be ex- almost exactly what you're describing. It's going to be really tough. It's going to be pretty close. And that, that's where Kyle Shanahan comes in and takes over the third quarter. I think we're going to see uh, the 49er offense control the game. I think we're going to see the run game, control the game, and Green Bay's not going to be able to stop those receivers. And uh, I I really see the Niner defense stepping up uh, like they have, and they're going to limit this Packer offense the way that they've been limited a number of times this year. The Packers are going to have their chances, but the Niners are going to have to execute. And obviously, this all gets thrown out the window if uh, if the Niners offense is turning the ball over. So they really, they cannot afford turnovers. 
But yes, I'm gonna, I, yeah. I'm going 31-20. <laughs> yeah, and the, and the reason I say it's going to be such a close score and we'll go down to the end is because there's nothing like playing against somebody that knows you so well. Yeah. And 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 you've got the head coach at Green Bay whose brother works for Cal Shanahan. Shanahan and the head coach of the Packers and the D coordinator for the Packers used to work together because yep. um, uh, I believe the defense coordinator for the Packers used to be the, either the head coach at Cleveland. Cause was Kyle was on, yes, Kyle was only there for one year. So yep. he was Kyle's boss. You know what I'm saying? So there is so – oh, and – Salah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the D coordinator for the 49ers, they all work together. So these are pals. These yep. are guys that have grown up together, been on the same staffs, kind of know the ins and outs of one another, know each other's tendencies. So this is really going to stretch the creativity of all these coaches to try to create that chess match or that chess move to try to up one on the other. So it's going to be exciting to just to see the thinking process of all these coaches on both sides of the ball to try to one up the other one, you know, and nothing is, is as great as having two brothers on the opposite side of the ball. You, mm-hmm. you got the younger brother with the 49ers who won the first go round. I mean, it's going to be really, really exciting, but there's a lot of behind the scenes connection between these staffs that make this game very, very interesting. Yeah, that's for sure. You know, one, one thing, uh, one stat of note that I read, um, you know, w- Shanahan in two games against Mike Pettin's defense, he's averaging 34 points a game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yep. I, I see that continuing. I really do. I see the Niners getting into the 30s. I really see the the Packers defense. While I I like their pass rush. Those 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 Smith brothers are good. Uh, and I think their young secondary is good overall. I just think they really struggle over the middle. They struggle with tight ends. Uh, the whole season they've struggled in these areas. And where does Kyle Shanahan like to work? Over the middle. I don't see Absolutely. them having the success that the Vikings had. The Vikings looked much more prepared to handle the over-the-middle passes and the play action. I don't see Green Bay having the same success in those areas. It To me, it just comes down to, is Jimmy Garoppolo uh, going to turn the ball over? Will the running backs turn the ball over? If they don't turn the ball over <laughs> I, I do see them winning the game although it, it still will be a much more competitive game than the first time around yes I think it's going to come down to whether Aaron Rodgers is going to be able to extend plays mm-hmm. or not that's going to be the key that's the only thing that can neutralize Sherman is that he extend Rodgers extend plays and allow the receiver to run away from Sherman and Aaron Rodgers does as usual, and he throws that pinpoint pass to keep the to get a first down, extend drives. You know, that's going to be the key to the game to me. Yeah, I think uh, largely we agree, and I think uh, largely we're 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 seeing the 49ers going to the Super Bowl. So hopefully that is exactly what happens, and it'll be great to. Uh, uh, to talk to you over text or something like that if that happens, because uh, holy cow, it's been it's been a long time. Hey, it's been a long time. Maybe we can do a little brief FaceTime just yeah. to kind of, you know, evaluate halftime or something of that nature. But um, it's going to be a good game to watch. And I think I don't think any team's going to lose it unless there is a key turnover um, or a bad special teams play. I think it's going to be a good game. And um, that's why I think it's going to go down to the end and you're going to have a team, you know, a 37, 34 game, something, something of that nature. Man, I can't take any more of these. My heart can only do so much, brother. I don't want a 37 <laughs> to 34 game. I know. <laughs> but it is going to be a good one. I agree. Yeah, a lot of excitement. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Well, there you have it, everyone. Thanks so much uh, for listening. Your 49ers are headed to the NFC Championship game and hopefully the Super Bowl. Hopefully everybody has a great time watching the game. If you're going to the game, wear red, be loud. And we will be back next week to discuss, hopefully, a Super Bowl berth for the San Francisco 49ers. So we want to thank everybody again for listening. Check out thegruelingtruth.com. And so this has been the 49ers Weekly Show on The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak.